Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a special celebration of Mass. Of course, every celebration of Mass is special, but today's extra special because it's our Harvest Festival celebration with collection for CareScent. We invite any children who would like to, to join the children's liturgy shortly after Mass begins. Father Tony will tell you when. And we're acting out today's gospel with glove puppets. And then the children are going to come back. And because it's a festival, they're going to decorate the church in various ways. So if you would like to help with that as adults, great. Um, if you don't want your children to appear on the live stream, it's better that they come back to their seats with you um, during that, because otherwise they'll, they'll be seen. Before our opening hymn, we have a prayer for our earth by Pope Francis, which is on the sheets that hopefully you picked up as you came in. Pope Francis invites us to pray. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, who are so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. If you can, please stand for our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. You are very welcome to our Mass this morning. As those who are here in the church know, uh, we could share also with those of you joining us via live stream that today is our Harvest Thanksgiving. When we give thanks to God for the good things that we enjoy and where we take small but very meaningful steps to share with those who have nothing. So our thanksgiving today takes the form of not just saying thank you to God, important as that is, but to recognize Christ's presence in those who have nothing. And in a particular way, Christ's presence in those who sleep rough on the streets of this incredibly prosperous city in the fifth most wealthy country in the world. So our contribution today is for CareSent, which works to provide a breakfast, a cooked breakfast, a place for a shower, a change of clothes, friendship, and dignity with the most vulnerable of our city in many ways. So as we bring thanksgiving into our hearts, let's also pray for those who work to lift those burdens and to try to change our society from its headlong course into selfishness to a place where all God's children can find a safe space to live. We pray also for those who work to try to ease the damage done to our mother the earth. God our Father, we confess our negligence at times in caring for your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess our reluctance at times to thank you when we enjoy the fruits of the harvest. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess the times when our greed focuses on storing up material things and failing to share with our needy sisters and brothers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us one day together to everlasting life. Amen. Before we start the Gloria, the children are going to go for their liturgy of the word which today has all kinds of exciting things to be done, both during and after. Go to the bunny. Come on. There you go. Okay. That's the... Theodore yeah. leads the way. It's not on there. 
Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the fruits that earth has given to benefit the human family. And we pray that as the working of your supreme providence has produced them, so you may cause the seed of justice and the fruits of charity to spring up in our hearts through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the prophet Amos. The Almighty Lord says this, Woe to those ensconced so snugly in Zion, and to those who feel so safe on the mountain of Samaria. Lying on ivory beds and sprawling on their divans, they dine on lambs from the flock and stall fattened veal. They bawl to the sound of the harp. They invent new instruments of music like David. They drink wine by the bowlful and use the finest oil for anointing themselves. But about the ruin of Joseph, they do not care at all. That is why they will be the first to be exiled. The sprawler's revelry is over. The word of the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. From your palace you water the fresh food for all your creatures and plants for your people to eat. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. You made the moon to tell the seasons, the sun when to set your people labor by the sweat of their brow from morning to night send forth your spirit O Lord that the face of the earth be renewed what variety you have created you have made fills the earth, creatures great and small. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. All creatures depend on you to feed them throughout the year. Provide all that they eat. With generous hands you satisfy their hunger. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. Glory to God forever. Joy in all your creation. I will sing to God throughout my life. I will play for my God as long as I live. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As a man dedicated to God, you must aim to be saintly and religious, filled with faith and love, patient and gentle. Fight the good fight of the faith and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you made your profession and spoke up for the truth in front of many witnesses. Now before God, the source of all life, and before Jesus Christ, who spoke up as a witness for the truth in front of Pontius Pilate, I put to you the duty of doing all that you have been told, with no faults or failures, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the due time will be revealed by God, the blessed and only ruler of all, the King of kings and the Lord of Lord, who alone is immortal, whose home is in inaccessible light, whom no man has seen and no man is able to see. To him be honor and everlasting power. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, Remember that during your life, good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if he wanted to, crossing from our side to yours, and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house, since I have five brothers, to give them warning so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Ah, no, Father Abraham, said the rich man, but if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not listen to either Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord.
There are times when the need to, to preach um, is an unwelcome burden when you really would rather not because you're conscious that perhaps something of what you say isn't going to win you any friends and may even begin to chip away at your congregation as people say no thanks very much and I suppose today is, is one of those Certainly in reflecting on the, the gospel, reflecting on the scriptures today, it's very hard to separate that out from what's happening in our country at the moment. And the unbridled greed that we are giving permission for, at the same time, as the benefits for the poorest are being capped. And we know very well that as the winter progresses, so the deaths from hypothermia, especially amongst the elderly, are going to increase. Ah, but, we might say, look, Billions are going to be spent on helping people have no more than a 100% increase in their energy costs. Our money, our taxes, is being given to whom? Not to a charitable foundation, but to those same people who are already making unthinkably big profits the producers of our gas and electricity are going to have it paid for with our money at their exorbitant prices. And that must be a moral question. It can't be neutral. What we do here has to be linked into how we live and how we structure our society how we structure society when we claim that this is a Christian country. You know, the racists who walk around with the cross of St. George saying this is a white country for white people. This is a Christian country, they say. Increasingly far from it, I think. But to go to the gospel, it's interesting that in all the parables, in all the Gospels, there is only one parable where someone has a name. And that's today's Gospel. And that's Lazarus, who sits at the gate of the rich man's house. It used to be called Dives and Lazarus. Dives isn't the rich man's name. Dives means wealthy. Divitus is wealth. Puerto Rico, the rich port in Latin is Portus Divitis. So he's a wealthy man, nameless man, who feasts every day dressed in fine linen and purple. Lazarus has nothing, not even the scraps that fall from the rich man's table are his. The dogs, the dogs probably his friends in the minds of Luke, the only ones who bother with Lazarus. They'll be able to go under the tables and help themselves to the scraps. But for Lazarus, nothing, nothing at all. And then they both die. And Lazarus is taken to the bosom of Abraham, we're told. The rich man dies and is buried. So the rich man dies and has all the ritual 
and the prayers and the blessings for someone who has died. He has a religious funeral, the rich man. Lazarus has nothing. And the rich man ends up in Hades. Now, Hades isn't hell in the Jewish mind. Hades is, if you like, the underworld. And in the Jewish thought of the time, it was a place of, of shadows, a place where you live but don't live, a place with no color or light or joy or companionship. It's grim. It's grim. And what does the rich man ask for? He asks that Lazarus do something quite remarkable. He wants him to dip his finger, his finger, into some water and to come and to touch him on his tongue. To dip his finger in water and touch him on his tongue. Isn't that an incredibly intimate thing? Yeah. Incredibly. People don't in the main, except people that we are very intimate with. We don't have any contact with our tongues. That's worth pondering. I suspect it's not so much the water as the touch. There's a phrase in the Gospel which I always find a bit scary when that gospel comes round, where Jesus says, be attentive because love in most people will grow cold. Love in most people will grow cold. So what are we doing here today? We've gathered with people who share the faith of Jesus Christ. We're gathered with people who, we hope all of us, have love alive in our hearts. And we're saying, by what we do here, and by what's going to happen in a few short moments, in the offertory procession, that we will not allow the world to be the way they want it. We will not allow the world to be the way they want it. Because we are living in a different way. And we are living with different values. And we value human beings, especially those whom society writes off, those who've fallen through the net, and there is no one from the state to catch them. Because if you're homeless, you haven't an address. If you haven't an address, you don't get a bank account. If you don't have a bank account, where do your benefits get paid into? They're through the bottom of the net. Because we are people we trust in whom love has not grown cold. Has not grown cold. Despite the incessant drumbeat that comes from our political masters of all persuasions, really, of all persuasions. Because they say that taxes are a great evil, we must cut taxes. We must cut taxes. There's the, there's the drumbeat. We must cut taxes. People will love it when we cut taxes. Well, what do you think that is at the back of the church? All that you've gone and bought, what do you think it is? It's a tax on people 
who will not let people go hungry and let them go cold and not have the things they need to wash with. And week by week, day by day, food arrives at the door of the church. All kinds of things come. Practical things come, tins of beans, cornflakes, toothbrush, toothpaste, all the things, nappies for the children, women's hygiene products come. And that, my sisters and brothers, is a tax. It's a tax on you who will not let people go hungry, your sisters and your brothers. And thanks be to God that you're willing to bear that burden. Thanks be to God that you're willing to shoulder that burden, that your faith is alive and active in you. As you reach out, Lazarus is safe with Abraham. But how many Lazaruses, and I don't know the feminine of Lazarus, Lazarina, I don't know, uh, are on the streets of our cities. Not just here. And then if we think of the world, just how many, how many are in need. So God grants you amazing blessings for what it is that you do. For the way you put the gospel into practice. But let's pray and pray as a community that despite all the persuasion to the contrary, we don't let love grow cold in our hearts. That we don't end up closed in on ourselves in the way that they want us to be. That we keep love alive and keep love active. See, I said it wasn't an easy one, eh? So I apologize if I've upset anybody in church this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things. Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. Let's take a moment for prayer then. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for our Bishop, Terence Patrick. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this parish family that we may always know how to reach out and to help even in the smallest of ways. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those in civil authority. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the work of care sent today for all the helpers and the volunteers perhaps most especially for those who befriend those who come those who see them as people those who receive friendship from them those who help them to know that they matter and have a place. 
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick. Those of our parish, those members of our own families, those in our city's hospitals and nursing homes, and those at home. Lord, in your mercy. The Mass this morning is being offered for the repose of the soul of Dr. Jonathan Belsire, who served our community for so many years, gave of his time, his skill, his patience, his humor, and his love. And as we commend him to God, we pray also for his family, his wife, family, and for those who are with us from the family today by, by live stream. We ask that God grant him and all the departed a place of light, happiness, and peace. And we remember those who mourn. especially those who have lost children in the course of the week. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And for the prayers that each one of us brings with us today. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, hear these and all the prayers we make in faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
You know, I could stand and watch people work all day long. Okay. Let's pray then. Sisters and brothers, with thanksgiving in our hearts, thanksgiving for all that God gives us, thanksgiving for the children that bring life and joy to our parish, that this, your sacrifice and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your lives, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of us from the church. Make holy, Lord, the offerings we bring you with thanksgiving from the fertile earth. And as you give us a rich harvest of earth's produce, so make our hearts abound with heavenly fruitfulness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. You have given us, Jesus, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. He made himself neighbor to the oppressed and to the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our loving Father and that you care for all your daughters and your sons. And so with the angels and the saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human family and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love. Together with Francis our Pope, Terence Patrick, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our sisters and brothers, especially Dr. Belsaia, and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and who reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace the pizza. Lamb of God, take grace in the world, have mercy on us. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins and the sins of all the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It was St. John Chrysostom, one of the early fathers of the undivided church, doctor in both churches, who said, you will not be able to fully recognize Christ present in the holy gifts of the Eucharist if you do not also recognize him truly present in those who beg at the door of the church.
Let's pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that as we give you thanks in this saving mystery for the crops harvested from the earth, we may, through the same mystery working within us, come to receive still greater blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sit down just for a quick moment. I'll try and be quick. Just be aware on Wednesday... The morning Mass is at 8.30 a.m., not 9.30 a.m. It's because the diocese has a health, safety, and environmental study day um, to which I, um, I need to go, along with Michael, who is our health and safety guy for the parish. Peter is also going to suffer equally um, for the day. So We're going to reintroduce the Masses on first Fridays, which were there before the lockdown, uh, which include, for those who wish, the sacraments of the anointing of the sick, uh, and then are followed by homemade cake and good company and tea and coffee and, and things. So um, they'll be the first Friday at 12 noon, so there won't be a 9.30 Mass that day. The information about All Saints, open evening got in there this week. Thanks very much to Mr. Thompson. There you go. That's just so that my, my currency is still okay with the, uh, with the school. We've only got three volunteers for the Ministry of Welcome so far. So if you think you could manage, you know, before Mass to uh, smile and uh, say good morning or good afternoon, hand out a newsletter, then that could be for, for you. It makes a lot of difference to people who maybe don't speak to anybody in the course of the week. Just have a a friendly smile and a warm welcome can make a lot of difference, really. And the gift aid, I apologize. Our system is new. We had um, email this week from somebody who had received a thank you email for their gift aid, which he had not intended to make. <laughs> so that's because um, it was switched on automatically on the system. It's now switched off. And I spoke to Dan at the financial office, and he said, quite rightly, the diocese can't claim back gift aid for other charities. So if you want to gift aid to CAFOD, you can't do it via the diocese. That's illegal <laughs> if we try and do that. So um, as it says there, uh, if you do want to gift aid to Missio or CAFOD or any of the other charities, then you need to do that direct to them. So we'll try and publish the web page there for you to do that and uh, we will however not claim back and keep the um, gift aid already given we'll work it out ourselves or Maggie will work it out for us and we'll give that we'll make sure it gets paid over um, so yeah thank you for for um, for that thanks for coming thank you on behalf of those you'll never meet who will be warmer better fed cleaner and have good socks um, especially with the winter approaching. Thank you on their behalf. When I was a boy growing up in Lancashire, uh, Harvest Festival was always a big thing. It's a rural area, so there were lots of the fruits, literally, of the earth that all went to the Little Sisters of the Poor in Preston. And uh, people would, in those less politically correct days, also bring in cigarettes and tobacco, especially for the old men. And um, they always got laid at the feet of St. Joseph. So whether St. Joseph was the symbol of the smoker or not, I don't know, but he always, got the, he always got the tobacco and stuff. If you stand, please. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.